you know what they say, you can't keep a good woman down. Um, unfortunately, whoever the good woman was couldn't be here today, so it's me. <laughs> I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Woo! Doesn't it feel great to come and gather with your friends and your church family and just join together to worship? We have missed it. Although we can worship at home, we can worship anywhere, anytime. But there is something special about being like-minded with others when we come together to worship. So we are just thanking God this morning that he is so good and he has given us this opportunity to join together once again. And so I'm happy to see all of you and we'll continue having a great, great morning today. Just a couple things I need to tell you about. Now that we're back into the church and resuming ministries, the women's prayer group is meeting on Tuesday mornings at 1030. So you're welcome, ladies, to join them at that time. Um, Mike has resumed the youth on Wednesdays at 630. So the teens are back in action. So it's fantastic. We're getting back to our regular ministries, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I also have a couple people who are celebrating this morning, and they are celebrating anniversaries. And Pastor Mike and Dion are celebrating their 23rd anniversary today. And Harvey and Thelma Zigafus are going to celebrate their 57th anniversary. And that will be this Wednesday, June 10th. So congratulations, guys. That's awesome. Okay, so now Pastor Mike is going to come and he's going to share with you this morning. Thanks, Roxanne. So how's everybody doing? Everybody looks good. It's good to see everybody. Missed you guys. It's funny how when, when you think just a few weeks ago, they shut us down and we couldn't be a part of this, and, and now we're gradually getting back. So it's, it's a good feeling. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are too. We're going to do a little prayer, and then uh, uh, we're going to honor our one and only graduate that we have this year. So uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you that you've allowed us to, to get back in the church and to, to worship you, Lord. We're just so grateful that, that we have our health and that, uh, that we're just able to be here and, and share in fellowship with one another. And Lord, we ask that you have your way in this, this service today, that the pastor's message will be well received and, and that eyes and and ears will be opened and hearts will be opened, Lord. We just ask that you have your way in this service. And, and we just ask that you bless us through, through the day and through the next coming week. And just ask that you be a part of our lives and, and continue to lead us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Myra. Myra Hernandez. She's our only graduate this year. We have a little gift for her. So here. Now, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about Myra <laughs> and try not to embarrass her any more than needed. <laughs> I met Myra about five years ago when I started coming to Crane in the youth group and she was kind of quiet and shy and, well, she's not quiet and shy anymore. <laughs> in fact, she likes to um, take charge 
she's definitely she's got some great leadership qualities and she's also a very hard worker she's been part of every single uh, fundraiser we've done she's um, helped with community services she's walked ditches we do that in the fall and it's in the spring and she's also um, she mows the yard once in a while she's helped with comfort care uh, there's just unlimited number of things that she's done she's pretty much anytime we've asked her to help she's volunteered to do it so she's just an amazing young young person so that being said normally what we would do now is we would ask friends and family to come up and place hands on the graduates and pray for them but because of the covid we can't do that so i'm going to ask that you do a hands forward kind of thing as we pray for her so let us pray Heavenly Father, you are so merciful and so kind. We thank you for Myra and for allowing her to be a part of our church. We thank you for your influence in her life and we ask for your continued blessings over her. We ask that you continue to guide her and lead her down the path that you have placed before her. Please grant her your wisdom and your knowledge so that she makes good decisions your peace and understanding so that she can overcome difficulties, and your mercy and kindness to love others when it may seem impossible. Thank you for all that you do, Lord, and for all that you are, and we thank you for hearing this prayer. And it is in your mighty name that we pray. Amen. Okay, and now we'd like to ask Kathy and Jake to come up to continue with our worship service. Again, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all back and those who are here. And um, just have to say that Jake and I, we came yesterday and ran through our music, and it was a lot more emotional than I expected it to be. So I will try to keep it together through the music, and I hope that you guys can too. But I just, um, the songs that we chose this morning, we just trust will bless you, and we just lead um, to praise the Lord this morning.
Amen. Boy, that sounded good. It's nice to see faces in here. Thanks for being here. I've been coming every Sunday and praying, and uh, I even sang a little bit. It sounded a lot better today. <laughs> and it's just nice to be together. Just if you're curious, we have, I think, 63 people in our service, which is uh, uh, just a nice group for this. And we have several people watching online, I'm sure, and so we'll be posting this uh, this afternoon. And so all of you online, welcome. We're glad you're there. And uh, when you're ready, we'll be here and we'll be together. We have an overflow uh, set up in the multi-purpose room. There's a big screen TV in there and uh, seating. And also uh, we'll go to two services when we need to. So we're just excited that uh, we're together. If you didn't, uh, if you wondered why we didn't take an offering, we're not passing the offering plates these days, but right when you go out the door, there's two boxes that uh, Daryl Klingfuss made, very beautiful boxes uh, that we can put our offerings in, and so that will be our custom in the, in the future. Thank you. I want to have you join me in prayer today for Chandy. A lot of you know Chantorn Chandy. He's, uh, here in America and, and uh, living for the Lord and now is dealing with cancer. He's got stage five cancer and will be, he's had chemo and will be having surgery uh, this Saturday over at Methodist Hospital in Rochester. I'm gonna ask you to stand, Chandy, and I'm gonna ask you just to uh, direct your prayer toward him. Again, we can't lay hands on him uh, like we would like, but we will. Uh, lay prayers on him. Amen. And Father, we thank you for Chandy. We thank you, Lord, for the help that he's getting medically. We thank you for the strength that you've given him throughout these months that he has uh, dealt with this cancer. We thank you for friends standing with him. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of lifting him to you this morning. We know, Lord, that you know our bodies intimately. You designed us and you formed us. And Lord, we pray that you will touch him right where he needs your divine touch. We know, Father, that you can heal him instantly. We know you can heal him over a period of time. We know you can use medicine, and we know you can go right around it. And so whatever way you choose, we lift our brother to you today and ask for your healing hand on his body, on his soul, and on his mind. We pray, Lord, that he would know that he's never alone. We pray that he would know he's in the hands of a father a good, good father, and we, we commit him to your care. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. Well, we're uh, looking forward to how God is going to use all these things. Uh, we have others in our church as well, and I appreciate Roxanne sending out uh, emails so you'll know how to pray for one another. But lately we've been looking at questions that Jesus asked. Sometimes he was kind of steering people's thoughts in a certain direction. Sometimes he was challenging an idea or an attitude that needed to change. Sometimes he was bringing somebody to a better place. There was this woman who had a, a partial blessing and Jesus brought her to a complete blessing by the question that he asked. And now we want to look at one that he asked more than once in different settings to different people and one that he still asks today, one that he is asking every person in this world. And I'd like for you as we uh, address it to watch the scripture from the Gospel of Mark chapter 10 as we look at it. And so uh, here it is. Jesus and his disciples went to Jericho. And as they were leaving, they were followed by a large crowd. A blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that it was Jesus from Nazareth, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Many people told the man to stop, but he shouted even louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him over. They called out to the blind man and said, don't be afraid. Come on. He is calling for you. The 
man threw off his coat as he jumped up and ran to Jesus. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man answered, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, you may go. Your eyes are healed because of your faith. Right away, the man could see. And he went down the road with Jesus. What a, what a day in Bartimaeus' life. And, and uh, he's called Bartimaeus, but that isn't a real name. Uh, Bartimaeus, Bar means son, and so he's the son of Timaeus. I, I read it recently about a guy who, uh, when he was born, his mom put on the, didn't have a name picked out. And so on the birth certificate, it said, you know, name will follow. And, and she never got around to it. Her name was Maxine, so they just called him Little Max. And um, when he got old enough to get a job, he had to file for a social security number, and so he had to have a name, so he, he got to name himself by then. And uh, he picked a name. Well, Bartimaeus was just known as so-and-so's son. And uh, he just didn't really have an identity of his own. He was another beggar that needed people's help because he couldn't work. He was blind, and, and so that's how it was. But when Jesus came along, Bartimaeus found out that he mattered. He mattered to Jesus, name or no name. And he sat along a busy road outside of Jericho where lots of people would pass by because he thought, well, if a lot of people come by, maybe a few will show me some pity. But when he heard the commotion, he, he checked to see what was going on and found out it was Jesus coming by and a large crowd all around him. And he got excited. This was his lucky day. Jesus was coming. Now, other people might spare him a few coins, but Jesus was known for his power to heal. Other people might give him some loose change, but Jesus could bring miraculous change. Other people might offer a handout, but the hands of Jesus changed whoever he touched. He was determined to get Jesus' attention. He started yelling as loud as he could, and the people near him, they were annoyed at that. They said, hush up. Well, what good would that do him? He needed to get Jesus' attention. And he yelled with all his might. You know, he didn't care how people looked at him. He wanted to be able to see them. And so it didn't matter to him if it irritated people. He was desperate. This mattered to him. His, his way of life was on the line. And he needed a touch from the healer. He didn't need a pat on the back from the crowd. And so he was determined to get Jesus' attention. You know, we have people in our time that are protesting, even today. They want to get people's attention. There's some injustice that they feel needs to be looked at. There's some hurt that needs to change. There's someone living in fear who ought not to. And people wish they would quiet down. And there's all kinds of protests about all kinds of things. And we have to have discernment because, you know, we don't agree with everything and we don't agree with every method. But the truth is that how will things change if people's attention is, is not drawn to what needs change? And Bartimaeus was determined to get attention and we need to be determined to let God draw our attention to things that we maybe would rather overlook. It's, it's sometimes not pretty. But I'm thankful here at Crane Chapel that when you come in and you look at our children's ministry and you look at our youth group, that the children here represent the population of Austin. We have, uh, and, and our worship services as well, to, to maybe a lesser degree. But anybody is welcome at Crane Chapel. We welcome and we love everybody because everybody is made in the image of God. And everybody is made for the purpose of God. And together, we can do what pleases God. And that's always been our, our intention and our, our way. And it's certainly, we want to even do better. Well, Bartimaeus understood the importance of his encounter with Jesus Christ. He, he wasn't going to let it slip past. 
He didn't want Jesus to go by and not even know Bartimaeus was there because he'd stay blind. There wasn't anybody else who could heal him. And Jesus was in his town for that one day. He was just passing through. And you know, we need that same sense of urgency about coming to Jesus for our greatest need. We need a Savior. We need someone who will forgive our sins. And Jesus is the one who came from God to die in our place and rise from the dead and make us part of the family of God by forgiving our sins and showing us why we're here. You need Jesus Christ. Don't let your opportunity to know him slip by. You need him. We all do. I, I heard about a young man who was raised in a, in a home where he was taught to follow Christ. He, went, he was taken to a great church where he learned the Bible. He knew right from wrong. He knew God's way. And yet he was attracted to the world. And as he got into his teenage years and then into his young adult years, he drifted farther and farther from God's plan for his life. He was just living for himself. And one day the pastor that he'd known all his life came to see him. And he urged him to come back to Jesus and to God's plan. And the young man just shook his head. He said, I'm not interested in that. He said, I'll tell you what, Pastor. I want to have a good time. I want to live the way I, I think. I just want to do whatever I want. And it doesn't matter to me what God thinks. But he said, don't worry about me because I have a plan. At the very end of my life, I'm going to ask forgiveness so I can go to heaven. He said, I plan to be like the thief on the cross. And his pastor listened and he looked at him and he had one short question. He said, but which thief? Yes. Amen. Which thief? You see, Jesus was nailed between two thieves. One of them cursed him and the other one repented and asked Jesus to forgive him. One of them had a change of heart and one of them went to his death rebellious and angry and defiant. And I've seen it happen. I've been with people who were dying and knew they were dying, who did not want to talk about God, who did not want to talk about forgiveness, who did not care. In fact, who even wanted me to leave if that's what I was there for. We don't know what our hearts will be like so Bartimaeus wasn't going to let that happen. He was going to yell and holler until he got attention. And you and I need to yell and holler for salvation if we don't have it because there's nothing that takes its place. Bartimaeus got louder as Jesus got closer. He called Jesus son of David. That was a way of recognizing that Jesus had, had descended from the line of David and that he was a designated son of David, that he was the one that God had promised from the very early years that he would send a Messiah, a Savior, a special deliverer. And Bartimaeus was acknowledging that he was asking for help from someone who really could help. This was a man from God. And he also was asking with humility because he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. He didn't feel that he was entitled to a miracle. He didn't demand that he get his eyesight back as if somehow he had a right to have what everybody else had. He knew that he could only hope for God to touch him in a way that came from God's heart. He knew the one that he was calling on was strong enough, but he needed to know if he cared enough. And he wasn't disappointed. It says Jesus stopped. He wasn't too busy. He wanted to help. He sent someone to bring Bartimaeus over to him. And he cares about you and me. He knows our needs. He knows our thoughts. He knows the hopes that we haven't even put into words. He's willing and he's able to meet our needs. The question is this, not whether he'll stop, but whether we'll stop. 
Not whether he's listening to us, but whether we are listening to him. Because he wants to help. He doesn't need to be begged. He just needs to be heard. And when Jesus called for this blind man, it says he jumped to his feet, he threw aside his jacket, and he was ready. Nothing else mattered. And he was led by the hand through the crowd until he was face to face with Jesus. And that's when Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? What is it that you want? (laughs) It seems kind of obvious, doesn't it? The guy's blind. But Jesus wanted him to say it. He wanted him to put it into words. You know, how are you going to know you have an answer to prayer if you never made a prayer? Now, God does a lot of things in our lives without us asking for it. We get up in the morning and the sun is shining and the water comes out of the tap and we, we're healthy and we're, our car runs and all kinds of things happen, whether we ask for it or not. But the Bible says there are some things in our lives that we will only have if we ask for them. The Bible says you do not have what you want because you do not ask God for it. Now in in the next part of that passage, it says you need to ask for the right things according to the will of God. You need to ask in the right way. But the truth is there are things in your life that God wants you to have if you'll ask for them. And Bartimaeus needed to ask. What do you want me to do for you, Bart? I want to be able to see. That was his answer. Teacher, I want to see. I want to see. He wasn't ashamed to ask for what he really longed for. But I wonder, was that the best answer he could give? Was eyesight the thing he needed more than anything else in the world? Would that do him the most good of anything? If he could have one thing from God is that the thing that he wanted and needed the most it changed his life but did it transform him on the inside it it changed every day that he would live but what happens after that the truth is that Bartimaeus did receive sight from Jesus but I wonder if he ever received forgiveness he found Jesus to be his healer But I wonder if he found Jesus to be a savior. Now, when you read to the end of the story, there's an indication that he he was grateful and he did follow Jesus. And so my hope is that his, his soul was lifted as well as his blindness, that he was helped all the way to his relationship with God. But isn't it possible that there were people who came to Jesus and were touched and healed and yet not changed on the inside, who went their selfish way to live their own life without God and died without a relationship with him, who are today separated from God, even though Jesus himself met some need of theirs. It's happening now, isn't it? Isn't Jesus blessing people today? Isn't he helping people today, even answering prayers for people today? Do you know that it's possible that we can get what we ask for and still miss what we really need? Don't make your prayers all about what's temporary. The one thing that we all need is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It can't happen until he forgives us for our sins. It can't happen until we acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But it's meant to happen. and God wants it to happen. What we ask for reveals our values and our priorities. It's a test of our character. At some point, it will determine our eternal destiny. If we want money, we'll keep scoring our lives by how things impact us financially. If we want to be important, we'll focus on what promotes us and what empowers us. If we are selfish, we'll never put God first or others before ourselves. And if God grants us our self-centered desires, it will only push us farther down the wrong path. 
We need to come to God and ask Him for what we really need. Earlier in this same chapter, two of Jesus' disciples, James and John, brothers, came and uh, said, we want to ask you for a favor. And so in, again, in the same words, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, we want places of honor when you come into your kingdom. We know you're going to be a king someday. We want one of us to be on your right hand and one on your left hand. Jesus, we want to be big shots. And Jesus said, well, uh, it's the wrong time to talk about that. In fact, my father will make those decisions. But he said, let me tell you what God wants from you right now. He said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. He said, if you want your life to matter, then serve God. Be available to do what others need. I suppose as they went along and continued to follow Christ and became more mature in that, they must have looked back on that day and been pretty embarrassed. But that's where they were. And here's the question again, what do you want Jesus to do for you? When he says, wait, just sit there a minute and tell me, what do you want me to do for you? What would your answer be? What is it? What's, what stirs your imagination? What gets your heart rate up? What makes you lean forward and say, yeah? And here's a test of what would be a worthy way to answer that. Luke says that after the blind man received his sight, that he followed Jesus and he gave praise to God. And any time that God answers a prayer, any time that he gives us a gift, any time that he works in our life, his goal is to deepen our connection to him, to draw us closer to him, so that we will know him and live in his plan and bring him praise. One more thought. Try asking your own question. Jesus what do you want me to do for you? Now, Jesus doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our time or our love. He doesn't need us. Like somehow he'll be depleted if we don't come around. But he wants us. He loves us. He's happy to include us in his plan for this universe that he laid out. In fact, he made us with a purpose. The Bible says we are God's workmanship, Amen. created in Christ Jesus to do good things, good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God prepares the assignment, and he prepares the person he's chosen to do it. And if you ask him, there's something he wants you to do right now. And you're ready to do it. Oh, there's more you'll learn as you go, but you're ready to start. And it comes when we acknowledge Jesus, you're my master. You're the one in charge of my life. You're the one who created me and made me for a purpose. I want to fit in to your plan. So let him show you what to ask for. You can ask for small, personal things because he really does care about you. You matter to him. Nothing that's important to you is unimportant to God. And you can ask him for big, hairy things because he gets more credit when he does big things. And he's not limited in what he can do. It just has to be according to his will. just has to be according to his will. A college student was just walking along in his neighborhood when he all of a sudden felt an urge and, and, like he was supposed to go up to a certain house and knock on the door. 
And whoever answered the door, that he should say, God wants you to know that he loves you. Now, this was a guy who already had a little trouble with his friends kind of fitting in, and he, you know, he was kind of a weird guy to them, and, and he knew this was really weird. And he would look kind of crazy, and he might scare somebody to do something like that. And so he didn't want to do it. But in his heart, he knew this was God. He, he had a relationship with God, and he knew that God could lead him and indeed wanted him to do this, and so he did it. He did it. He, he was weird enough he would listen to God. He went up and knocked on the door, and a woman kind of cracked it open a little bit and peeked out at him. And very calmly and very sincerely, he said, God wants you to know that he loves you. And he was startled when her hands flew up and she began to cry. She just sobbed. I mean, she couldn't, she couldn't stop. She couldn't control it. It just, would just, it just erupted. And he didn't know what to do. He just stood there and kind of prayed in his heart, Lord, whatever she needs, she needs it. And finally, when she settled down, she said, how did you know? She said, just a few minutes ago, I said, God, if you're real, show me that you love me. She's never going to forget that moment, is she? He's never going to forget that moment. What a thing to let God use you in a moment of crisis for somebody. What a thing to know that God had his way. I had a choice, and God had his way, and somebody had a need met, a deep need. Now, I don't believe that God is doing that kind of thing all the time, but I believe he's doing it all the time. I just don't know that it's something you can expect in your life that today God's going to say, just pick up the phone and dial some number. I'll tell you which numbers to push. But it does happen. And here's what does happen regularly in all of our lives. God nudges us. It's not really a weird thing. It's just saying to somebody, why don't you go ahead of me in the line? Can I help you carry that? I prayed for you today. It's sitting at a stoplight and praying for the kid on the sidewalk. It's just normal stuff. It doesn't make you weird. It just makes you receptive to God's prompting. And when you do what God prompts you to do, when you're just kind and, and um, uh, alert, God uses you. Isn't that what we want? Most of the tension in this country isn't going to go away with one big action, it's going to be chipped away as God's people, as good people, as willing people, do God's will. And just touch one another with kindness. And we can do that, can't we? We can all do that. So let me close with this challenge. Be bold with what you ask for. And be bold with what you offer God. He deserves both, doesn't he? We're going to close. Uh, we're going to pray. We're going to close with a song. We're actually going to dismiss today in a kind of formal way. I'm going to step in the back and just dismiss from the back row to the front row and just kind of let you leave. And if you want to chat with somebody, maybe better outside. And we just want to... We, we have two people, active people in our church who this week found out they have the COVID-19 they would be here probably otherwise. And so it is real, and it, we, we just want to be careful about it. We, we, we don't want to mess up somebody. And so we, we're, we're being careful. But we also want to love one another as best we can without endangering one another, right? So would you pray with me? Father, we don't even know Bartimaeus' real name. We don't know if he ever was given one. But we know that you loved him and you cared about him and Jesus, you touched him. 
and you wanted us to know about it because it shows us what you're like. It shows us how you're still working. And we pray today that we would be willing to receive that message, that you are powerful and you are caring and that we can come to you with whatever we need. And you even ask us not just what do you need, but what do you want? And so, Lord, we don't come to be pampered, but we do come to be loved. And we ask you to work in our lives in a way that brings you glory, that gives you credit, that makes our lives count. And Lord, we thank you for Myra graduating and going on to new challenges. We thank you, Lord, for our students finished with another school year, moving ahead. We thank you in all of our lives that whatever is ahead is in your hands. And we pray that we would put ourselves in your will to accomplish your purpose in all that we do. If there's anyone who's never called out to you for forgiveness and salvation, Lord Jesus, we pray that today would be their day to say yes to you, to say, yes, Jesus, I, I need you, and I ask you to forgive me, and I ask you to take charge of my life and make me the person you created me to be. And help us all to live out that prayer day by day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you're watching online, we want to thank you for being with us today, and our contact information is there. And we, we hope you'll let us know how to pray for you and how to encourage you. And now we're going to listen to a song, and, uh, and then uh, I'll be in the back, and I'll just start uh, kind of acknowledging that it's time for you to, to be dismissed. And God bless you in the week ahead. We'll look forward to another time together. Amen.